is about empowering the community. So uh, it's kind of hard right now to, to unpack it in layman terms because of all the fear mongering and the lies that's going out, the fiction that's going out in terms of this bill. It's not about getting rid of felony murders. It's not about uh, penalizing our police. It's not, these are not bills that put us up the risk of the police. It's about empowering our community, community and keeping our law enforcement safe. I brought up felony murders. People are up in arms that we're trying to get rid of felony, felony murders. We're not. Let's say me and you went to go rob a bank and you out of nowhere took out a gun and shot somebody. Right now, based on the legislation and killed them. Right now, based on the legislation or the laws, you will get charged with a felony, felony murder. I will get charged with a felony murder, even though you shot the gun. So this legislation, the legislation around that is that you will get charged with the felony murder and you'll be the only one charged with the felony murder, but I'll still get the robbery, armed robbery felony. I'll still get charged at the highest extent of the law. Those who uh, committed murder is the only ones who should be charged with felony murder. That's it. We're not getting rid of felony murder. We're in the middle, and I'm not ready to speak on it yet. We, people are, uh, our law enforcement scared about qualified immunity. We're literally talking to law enforcement even now. My, our chairman, uh, Representative Slaughter, is in conversations with law enforcement on qualified immunity. I went to I looked over there to see he's still not at his desk, but he's talking with them. And so it's not like we're, we're not really trying to push this. We, we've been working on this since the summer, and we've had subject matter hearings for hours. And I understand law enforcement up north have been a part of the discussion, but the associations that they are, are a part of have. And it's, a, it's about not just eliminating racism, it's about uh, empowering the community and making sure our community feels safe. Sorry that I keep talking, but another one, uh, people are afraid that anyone could file a complaint and I'll get fired. Not true. It's just opening, it's creating a system so that anyone can file a complaint and uh, the chief of police is not required to even use those complaints if they don't so desire. We're creating a system. Because right now, if I have to file a complaint, I had to, it has to be a sworn statement that I do in the police department. So I got to go to the police department to file a complaint about the police. How intimidating does that sound? Empowering the community. This, this is what our legislation is trying to do. We don't want to decrease safety. We don't want to defund the police. We're not trying to do that. One thing, going back to that, defund the police, you're hearing that because we're saying that you'll lose funding if you don't comply to the body cam legislation. You have four years, three to four years until 2025 to comply. You have some years to comply. I wanna, I wanna make sure I got the years the right. You got years to comply. And we're, our new general assembly starts tomorrow. And I, we're not, we're not uh, we don't, we, we know that people are scared about the funding. We'll be working on funding too. This doesn't go into immediate uh, action. This waits until July to happen. So the Black Caucus will be working from now to July to make sure we have funding for the, for the situations that we're uh, requesting and demanding. So this fear tactic that we're defunding the police, uh, taking uh, law, uh, penalizing law enforcement, uh, taking away uh, increasing crime in our streets is not the case. It's about true police reform that empowers the community. It's insulting because what community are you referring to? Uh, we're in a position to where we want the whole community, every person in our community to uh, feel protected and have, a, uh, have some type of rapport with our law enforcement. As you, we are all aware, black people don't have that rapport at the moment. Not just black people, brown people, not just brown people. There are some white people don't have that rapport the law enforcement. We wanted to get to a place where the community feels empowered. Um, they feel empowered when it comes to the relationship with their law enforcement because they know that the law enforcement is not protected or, or is not above them or we're at even playing field because that's what it's always meant to be. So the law enforcement, the police association and the sheriff association was part of the conversation. And I'm, I'm a leader in our community, so I'll take blame. Was our specific law enforcement officers part of the conversation? No, you're right, they were not. I don't, not to my knowledge, not invited by me, um, because I'm in the, over the summer, we were in this 
battle between Black Lives and Back to Blue, and they were a part of it. And so I'm, and I was not, I, I stayed in the middle because I wanted to make sure both sides knew what was trying to happen in terms of community empowerment. And so I, I talked to our law enforcement earlier today and said, why were you part of this? How does this help the situation? Sloganism does not help us in this moment. So yeah, I'll take blame. And I plan on having coffee with Sheriff Caruana uh, when I come home from this, uh, but the associations uh, were part of the discussion since day one. We want this to be effective. We know that we got to find some type of way to fund it. So we got time too. We're going to be doing it in the 102nd General Assembly in the spring session. Stand by. Not the case at all, because right now, Kyle Rittenhouse is at a bar with a derogatory t shirt on, 17 year old kid at a bar, by the way, free after he killed, two, he killed people because someone was able to post his bond. This gets rid of cash bail so that he could, the judge determines if someone should be in or out. If, you, if it's a low level, uh, if you, you're not a risk for flight, you can stay out. You don't have to stay in because you can't post bail. A lot of people are in for months, losing their house, job, every relationship, everything, simply because they can't post the, their cash, they can't post their bond, their money bond. And so it gets rid of angel investors or family coming to help you out. And it puts, the hand, it puts it in the hands of the judge. So it makes it easier to keep our criminals in jail. Because right now a judge could say, you are, you are a threat to our, our society, you're staying in jail. And then out of nowhere, that someone posted their bond. There's nothing we can do about it at the moment. And they get to walk free. So no, it makes it easier for people to stay in jail, in, in our, especially violent criminals and people who are a threat to our, to our society. It's important that I, I wish that both sides, no matter how they feel about it, will just express the facts. And that's what I've been trying to do. I've been, if you go to my page, I, as much as I can, because it's been crazy down here, you can only imagine. I've been trying to express facts and dilute fears. Um, if you talk to uh, people in our community who's exp expressing support of this bill, they talk about the facts. This is not a slap on the wrist for law enforcement. We are wa wanting to work with law enforcement. But we understand that our communities need to feel empowered uh, when it comes to their relationship with, with our police officers. And so this is the benefit for community and law enforcement. Yeah, we already have. He called me finally when he saw my Facebook Live. And he made a good point. He said, you could have called me too. I'm like, you are absolutely right. Communication goes both ways. As a leader, I'll own up to that. And so, but before, I, I mentioned like in my Facebook Live, during the summer months when things went crazy and questionable things happened within his department, before I went live, I called him. I found his number to call him. I didn't have his number this summer, but when the racist uh, toast come, came out of his department, I called him. I didn't come blazing with uh, accusations. So even though I did not have his number, I found his number. So yeah, we're gonna have coffee when I come home. Um, and we're going to talk about this, even if it doesn't, even if it passes or if it doesn't pass. Um, either way, you and I are going to have a, call, a conversation. I'm looking forward to it. Shortly thereafter, he said, yeah, we've been getting calls. Uh, he directed them to my Springfield office. So I have to call my, my uh, assistant from my Springfield office. I've gotten Facebook messages and that's totally okay. That's what I'm here for, to hear you out. But I don't want people to be fueled by, by the false rhetoric and the false narrative to what's behind this bill. So that's why I came out before, I was gonna wait for our, our interview to, but when I saw that, I knew I had to say something because it, it will allow that false rhetoric to resonate too long. So um, there's no hard feelings, but I want, and I'm, there's no emotions behind this and I'm not attacking law enforcement with my rebuttal. I just want people to know the facts. And from there, think about, uh, think yourself and let think. However, you want to uh, uh, lean on this uh, situation, on this uh, on this topic, totally up to you. But as long as you have the facts.